Okay, so in the previous video, we introduced the concept of a limit, um, and we talked about um, at their simplest, we can evaluate a limit simply by substitution. However, if substitution um, results in an indeterminate expression, so zero divided by zero, we would need to um, algebraically manipulate um, the function to see if we can calculate a limit. Um, however, if we end up with a number divided by zero, um, then the limit is undefined. And we found that that happened with this particular limit here. So the limit as x approaches 3 of 2x plus 1 over 4x um, minus 1 uh, is equal to, um, what's that going to be equal to? Uh, 7 on, uh, sorry, that wasn't the expression, it was 4x minus 12, my apologies. So it was, um, it turns out to be 7 on 0, and anything divided by 0 is indeed um, undefined. So we found that algebraically in the previous lesson. So I want to examine this particular limit further. So if we, again, like we did in the previous video, have a look at what's happening as we look at x values that get closer and closer and closer to 3. So I'm going to start off at 0.1 below 3, 2.9, and 0.1 above 3, 3.1. And then I'm going to be 0 0.01 above and below, and then 0 0.001 above and below 3. So we're gradually looking at what happens as x gets closer and closer to 3. Okay. Now, as x gets closer and closer to 3 from the positive side, okay, we see that the value of this expression initially is equal to 18, and then it's 175.5, and then it's 1750.5, and then it's 175,000. So we can see that as we this happens, we seem to be getting bigger. So we're approaching positive infinity as we go towards 3 in that direction. However, if we come towards 3 from the negative side, okay, we can see that when x equals 2.9, the value of this expression is negative 17. When it's 2.99, the value of the expression is negative 174.5. Um, when it's 2.999, so we're even closer to 3, we've got an even bigger negative value, negative 1949.5, etc. So we can see that as we approach 3 from the negative side, it seems that we're getting closer to negative infinity. And the fact that these two numbers uh, well, they're not even numbers, but the fact that we're not heading to the same value means that the limit is not defined. If we were to have a look at the graph of this function, this is what's happening, and that's why this limit's not, defi not defined as we approach 3. So we can see that as we approach 3 from above, so as we were looking at um, x equals a number that's bigger than 3 but getting closer and closer to 3, the function approached positive infinity, was heading off to positive infinity. But as x approached 3 from below, so looking at um, x values that are less than 3 but getting closer and closer and closer to 3, the function's heading off to negative infinity. And so because we're not heading to the same place um, as x approaches 3, we, our limit is undefined. We can talk about, we talk about these as left and right limits, okay? So as I approach 3 from the right-hand side or from above, okay, um, that's the right limit, and as I approach 3 from the left-hand side or below, that's the left limit, okay? So we can see that um, here. So the limit of f of x as 3 is approached from above is infinity, and we would write that like this, okay? So the limit as x approaches 3, and we write a little plus, a superscript plus. So it's like 3 to the power of plus, suggesting that we're approaching 3, but from the positive x-axis, so from the positive side. Okay, um, that limit exists, and that's positive. Uh, sorry, that's positive infinity. So as we approach three from the positive side, so um, the right hand side here, we approach three from above. Um, the limit is infinity. Similarly, as we approach three from below, so we write that by writing three with a little negative in the power. Okay, so a superscript negative. So as we approach three from below, as we approach three from the negative side, um, the limit of f of x f of x is clearly getting closer to negative infinity, so the limit is negative infinity. However, because the um, left limit, the right limit and the left limit, the limit as we approach 3 from above and the limit as we approach 3 from below, because they don't actually equal each other, that means the limit as x approaches 3 is not defined. Okay. So let's have a think about this piecewise function here. Um, the graph of this function is shown here, so we can sort of see graphically what's happening. Um, so we know that um, that's the point 0.39, because we've got the function here, so when x equals 3, y equals 9. 
um, and that's the point uh, when x equals 3, y is 1 there. That's 3, 1. Okay. So what we can see here is if we want to think about the limit as x approaches 3, we can calculate the limit as x approaches 3 from above of f of x. Okay, so that is, if we're heading along the graph from a higher x value than x equals 3, we're heading towards x equals 3, we can see in this case, the function is approaching the value of 9. Okay, it approaches, sorry, it's a bit above there, it approaches that value of 9. Okay, if we approach lim, um, x equals 3, if we approach 3 from below, so if we travel along our function, heading towards x equals 3 from lower x values, we can see that the function is heading towards this value at 1. Even if the function is not defined at that point, remember it's a limiting value, okay, we're heading towards 1. So then, since the limit as x approaches 3 from above of f of x, remember you can't just say limit doesn't equal limit because it's an operation, so limit of f of x from above does not equal the limit as x approaches 3 from below of f of x, the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x is undefined or doesn't exist. Oh, sorry, undefined. Okay. Um, let's have a look at another one. So consider the function f of x equals square root of x where x is bigger than or equal to 4, negative 2x plus 4 where x is less than 4. By considering the graph, determine if the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x exists. Okay, so let's think about, again, we've got two separate functions here. Square root graph, I'm just going to do a rough sketch and then I'll formalise it. Square root graph looks like that, but we only want it from where x is equal to 4, when x, that would be the point 4, 2. So we'd be only looking at that bit there, not looking at that bit. And then negative 2x plus 4. So it has a y-intercept at 4, gradient of negative 2. Um, when x is equal to 4, negative 2 times 4 is negative 8 plus 4 would be negative 4. So it's going to go like this. Okay, so let's draw that in a bit more formally. So we've got our, just sort of thinking that through roughly to get my scale right. Um, so my line has a y-intercept at 4, um, it will cross the x-axis at 2, and it will, when x equals 4, it'll be at negative 4. Okay, so that's... Okay, so that's, that's 2 there. Um, the square root function um, would have started here, okay, but it goes through the point 4, 2, which would be there, given that that's 0, 4 there. So it wouldn't have gone that high, so it would have been doing this, okay, but we don't want the bit before 4, so it's just doing this. And that is the point 4, 2. 2, 0 there. Okay, by considering the graph, determine if um, the limit as x approaches 4 exists. Okay, so let's think about the limit as x approaches 4 from above of f of x is clearly going to be equal to 2. So as x gets closer and closer to 4 from above, the value of the function is getting closer to 2. Okay, so that equals 2. The limit as x approaches 4 from below of f of x. So as we approach 2 from a lower x value, sorry, as we approach 4 from a lower x value, we're clearly heading towards negative 4. Okay. So therefore, since uh, the limit as x approaches 4 from above of f of x doesn't equal the limit as x approaches 4 from below of f of x, then the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x is undefined. Alright, then does the limit as x approaches 5 exist? Okay, oh, sorry. So when x equals 5, we're here. Okay, so that'll be the point 5 root 5. 
So yeah, so it doesn't mean, so when we talk about the left limit, we don't have to be able to get to it from, you know, negative infinity. We don't have to be able to travel all the way directly to negative, to five from here. It's just within the neighborhood of the point. If we're close to the point, if we're heading towards that point from the left and from the right, um, can we calculate the limit? And in this case we can, and the limit will be, um, so yes, um, the limit as x approaches 5 from above of f of x is the same as the limit as x approaches 5 from below of f of x and it's root 5. Sorry, that shouldn't be negative 1. Um, and so therefore the limit as x approaches 5 is root 5. So if the function actually goes through the point Okay, then the limit at that point will definitely be defined. That's the same as saying, can you substitute 5 into the equation? Yes, in this case we can, and so therefore we can calculate the limit by doing that. Okay, continuity is connected to this idea of limits. So um, informally a function, and continuity is important, we'll come back to it much later on in this topic. Um, informally, a function is continuous at a point, x equals a, if the graph of y equals f of x can be drawn through x equals a without lifting pen off the paper. So if, for example, let's say we've got a parabola, let's say this is x equals a here, okay, the graph's continuous at that point because I can draw the graph through that point without needing to lift my pen. The function's actually defined at that point, it's continuous at that point, okay. Thinking about reasons why we might not be continuous, and we have a couple of graphical features that mean that we might not be continuous when x equals a. So one would be, for example, if there was an asymptote when x equals a. Okay. So in this instance, I couldn't draw the graph past x equals a without lifting my pen. Truncus, continuing up, I'd have to lift my pen to jump over the asymptote and then continue drawing. So not continuous. Okay. Um, same reason for discontinuity, but let's say we had a hyperbola instead. Because so I'm going to have these drawn here, I'll come back to them in a minute. So let's say we have a hyperbola. So again, we can't draw the graph over x equals a, so we can draw the graph, draw the graph, draw the graph. Here I'm going to have to lift my pen over the asymptote and also up above the x-axis in order to keep drawing the graph. So definitely not continuous when x equals a. Another reason might be what we saw um, previously in that we might have a function where we have, sorry, we might have a function where we have a hole in the graph at x equals a. Okay, so we might have that problem, not continuous there. And the other one would be what we've just looked at might be an example such as a piecewise function. So let's say we've got a piecewise function which is a bit of a line and a bit of a parabola okay where they don't actually join okay so at this point I would have to lift my pen in order to continue drawing the piecewise function interestingly so not continuous at that point when x equals a interestingly it's not we wouldn't just assume that a piecewise function is not continuous because if I had a line joining with a parabola where they actually joined when x equals a, then I can draw that without lifting my pen. And so that would be continuous at x equals a. Okay, so they're probably the main um, sort of things we'll see, asymptotes, holes in graphs, or um, piecewise functions where we have jumps in graphs, where um, it's not continuous at that point. So formally, the de definition of, sorry, definition of continuity is actually about limits. So if the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a, then we say that f of x is continuous at x equals a. So essentially we need three things to exist and to be equal to each other. So we need the limit as x approaches a from below to be equal to the limit as x approaches a from above. That ensures that the limit actually exists. But we also need that to actually equal f of a. So we need the function to actually exist at a. So things like asymptotes and holes, the problem there is the function doesn't even exist at x equals a. Okay. So whereas this one, um, sorry, um, referring to this one down here, um, this one the function does exist when x equals a, okay, but the limits aren't equal. The left limit doesn't equal the right limit. 
Okay, so let's just have a quick think about these. So in this case, the right limit and the left limit and f of a all give the same value. Okay, so that's why that one works. This one the same. As we approach a from below and from above and actually sub a into the function, they all give us the same value and that's f at a. Okay. These ones don't work. This one, in this case, the limit as we approach from above, below and above is the same. Okay. So in this case, the limit as x approaches a from both above, above, both below and above are the same. And so therefore the limit as x approaches a of f of x exists, okay, and it's infinity. But in this case, the issue is that f at a is undefined. Okay, so that's what makes the problem. Um, in this case, the limit as x approaches a is undefined because the left and right limits aren't the same, okay. So in this case, the limit as x approaches a from always write that a from below is negative infinity, and the limit as x approaches a from above is positive infinity. So that's an issue to start with. Okay, the limit's not defined, um, and then in addition to that, f of a is undefined as well. Okay, so two problems there. Um, in this one, the limit again, the limit's defined. As we approach a from above and below, we're approaching the same value. Okay. Um, so limit as x approaches a of f of x is defined. Um, we don't know exactly what it is. I, I won't say it's equal to f of a, but it is defined. Um, but f at a is not defined. Okay, and in this one here, um, f at a is defined, okay, but the limit as we approach from a and above is not defined. Okay, so in this case, the limit as x approaches a from, be from below of f of x is equal to f of a, that's all good, okay, but um, the limit as x approaches a from below is something different. It doesn't equal, sorry, of f of x it doesn't equal um, f at a and it doesn't equal the limit as x approaches a from, um, sorry, from above. The limit as x approaches a from above is not the same as the limit as x approaches a from below and it also doesn't equal f at a, okay? Okay, so um, therefore that's where the problem lies here, okay? As I said, informally, if you can draw the graph without needing to lift your pen, it's continuous. Formally, um, it's about the left and right limits needing to exist. The other um, point that this brings in, which I'll touch on here and we'll come back to this much later in the topic, is that if I have, let's say, a function, a parabola with a restricted domain, so let's say that's, um, that's a there, okay? Again, in this case, the limit as x, the, the function is not continuous when x equals a, okay? And that's because the limit as x approaches a from above is undefined. And so therefore the limit as x approaches a is undefined. Okay, so the limit as we approach a from below is equal to f at a, but because we can't also say that the limit as we approach from above is the same, we can't say that the limit exists at that point and therefore we cannot say that the function is continuous at that point. So endpoints, even if they're included endpoints, the function's not continuous at an endpoint. Okay, we'll come back to that later. All right, so um, if a function is not continuous, it is discontinuous, and we can refer to a discontinuity at x equals a. So example two here, determine if f of x equals one on x minus three is continuous at x equals three. So if you think about the graph of this, you have an asymptote at x equals three, it's a hyperbola. Okay, so in this case, um, the limit as x approaches three of f of x is undefined and f at three is undefined. Therefore, f of x is 
discontinuous. We have a point of discontinuity, discontinuous at x equals 3. Determine if f of x is continuous at x equals 3. Okay, so I don't immediately know what the graph of this looks like, but let's think about if I were to sub in 3 here, f of 3 is equal to uh, 3 squared minus 9, so it's 9 minus 9 over 3 minus 3, so that's 0 over 0. Um, so that's indeterminate, okay, but, but it's undefined. So f of 3 doesn't exist. f of 3 is undefined. So that in itself is a problem with the continuity. We can work out the limit as x approaches 3 here because it would be indeterminate, but we can still calculate the limit by simplifying the expression first. Um, so the limit is the limit as x approaches 3 of, if I expand that, it's x minus 3 times x plus 3 over x minus 3. They cancel out. It's the limit as x approaches 3 of x plus 3. And so the limit is 6, but the fact that f of 3 itself is undefined uh, means that the function is discontinuous. This would again be an example of uh, a graph with a hole in it, like we saw earlier. Um, so that in itself means um, f of x is discontinuous at x equals 3. Okay, so again, the work here is from another worksheet. It's called Left and Right Limits and Continuity, and that worksheet is available to you on Canvas.